Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, and I am just so excited to be joined by Paco, who is running our production today. Hi, Paco. Oh, oh, there's there's also Andrew. He's it's me. Hi, I'm here. That way. I had to run downstairs, yeah. but I, I came back. I just I have an elevator desk. We have like the standing sitting desk. Mine has like an elevator that I can kind of just up and down. So I'm here. I'm ready. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I'm excited. Andrew's joining me for the first time on a stream and we have some cool stuff. So today, Andrew's gonna get all into it, but we're gonna be building out, Andrew's gonna be building out a website in Photoshop and then tomorrow I'm taking over and we're gonna be doing some fun stuff in Adobe XD. But before I pass it over to Andrew, big hello. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone in chat. If you are tuning in, let us know in the chat who you are and where you're tuning in from. We've got Kathleen. Hey, Kathleen, great to see you. Wade and Clever and Bliss and Paco and Alejandro, Megan. Great to see everyone. Man, it is like a Val. mod party up in here. We got Wade, Kathleen, Voodoo Val. It's like a Love whole it. thing up here. Nice to see you. And yes, I am shaking it. I have been listening to Cher all day. And so it's coursing through my veins. Please do share. Yes, yes. Share, share and like. It's just, yeah. just share stream. All right, so I'm gonna pass it over to Andrew and I'm sure people, all, everyone knows who you are, but quick introduction and uh, let's get into it. Sure, uh, my name's Andrew, uh, I'm your new pen pal uh, and I'll be hosting the stream. So I do a lot of brand identity design uh, down here in Southern California, a ton of streaming with you all. Uh, hopefully we've met before online, uh, a lot of illustrator content. And we also have a show every Friday that we do called Adobe Office Hours right here on Adobe Live. And the cool thing is, this is like the ultimate crossover stream because not only are we bringing Photoshop and XD together, we also are crossing over with Office Hours. So we're gonna be making a web experience for our show on Friday uh, called Office Hours, which is basically just a great experience for all of you to get what you need and level up your design senses. If you're going back to school, we help with portfolios, um, all that fun stuff. Uh, so that's what we're doing today. It's gonna be a great time. Sweet, I'm excited to Check it out. I haven't used Photoshop for web design in quite a while. So I'm excited to kind of see how that all unfolds on your end. And then tomorrow we won't necessarily compare and contrast, but we're going to kind of go into how XD can take those documents, whether they already exist or maybe you create them from scratch and then build upon them with prototyping, live co-editing and more. Yeah, so um, we are going to be working in Photoshop pretty much the entire day. Uh, and we always talk about it uh, on these streams. And I love to mention on my streams, there's no wrong way to do things. And so I know a lot of people are used to working a full XD uh, kind of workflow, but I've built photo, uh, built websites in Illustrator that then go to Photoshop, that then go to XD, that like mm -hmm. I animate something in After Effects, like as long as you get there, that's the point. Uh, and so we wanted to show you how to take something from Photoshop into XD um, because it just levels up. And again, I'm not super experienced in XD, so it'll be fun to have ideas and be able to bounce them off Howard, who is the mastermind to actually make ideas reality uh, and see what happens tomorrow. So yeah, let's go ahead and hop in. We're just gonna start in Photoshop. I'm gonna start with a 1920 by 1080, um, web large uh, standard 72 DPI uh, and just create that document. Sweet. Boom, there we go. Uh, and chat, if it looks like I'm looking everywhere, you're hanging out over here today. So if I'm looking over this way, that means I'm looking at you, kid. Um, all right. I know I've got windows all over. I've got your screen over here. I've got us over here and chats over here. It's like all in the Twitter's over here, just in case some questions come in over there. It's like psh, all over. Yes. Pure, and yeah, if you guys have questions, go ahead and drop them in. Um, and I also, if you look down, let's see, where am I? If you look right over there, uh, as I do hotkeys and kind of do things and change things over, you'll be able to see those hotkeys kind of just pop up. Um, I'm gonna try to work super fast today because we have a lot to do. So if I'm hotkeying, you can kind of track along there. Um, all right, let's just hop in and start off. Um, so the first thing that I did going into this is I got all of my resources together. Uh, I think it's really important to be organized when you're going in with a game plan, uh, especially mm -hmm. today when we're gonna be working pretty fast. And so I leveraged uh, Creative Cloud libraries, which are just the greatest thing ever, to have all of my different colors, all of our different logos. Um, we have five seasons of Office Hours now, which is crazy. 
Um, nice. And so each one has a different look, each one had a different theme. And so we've pulled in a lot of textures, colors, elements, logos, uh, so that we can use them as we build out this web experience. Um, when you're starting a project like this, aside from libraries and you know pulling your assets together, do you dive into sketchbooks? Do you, you know, write things on napkins or what's the process there? Yeah, so it's funny because usually it's whatever is near me gets to be like the idea out. Uh, my desk is actually like a giant whiteboard. Oh, I love and so those. There's all kinds of just random things like written on my desk from different ideas or whatever. And so a lot of times I'll sketch an idea there. Um, I used to use a, a, an iPad program called Adobe Comp. Uh, hmm. which back in the day, it, I think it's reached end of life, but it was comparable-ish to InDesign. And I would use it for like initial ideas and just wireframing and then just have it so that I had my boxes where we were. Um, hmm. For this one, I do have, I'll, I'll show you guys behind the curtain a little bit. I do have a, a build out that I was working on before that's right here. Um, and so we do have a build out that we have been working on that we're gonna kind of use as a sketch um, and work our way up from there. So. Yes, I wireframed before we started, but we're going to start over and uh, see where we get. Love it. And usually with web stuff, I like working top to bottom. I kind of just think, how am I going to scroll this and then make decisions as I go and almost go all the way through and then come back for another pass if I want to make changes. Hmm, I'm curious what percentage of designers work top to bottom, because I, I typically do that too. Um, I don't know the reason for it. It could be just a weird mental thing, but yeah, I, I'd, be, I'd be curious to see the stats on that. Yeah. Uh, and what's nice is in Photoshop, it it's funny because a lot of, I'm comfortable working in Illustrator. I can do some Photoshop, a little XD, but it all works the same, which is nice when you're working with rectangles, squares, and different shapes is I can leverage these Creative Cloud libraries that I made the kind of uh, header up there that we want for maybe a search bar. And I can just have that selected and then come in here and select on, please, there we go. Select on this color and it should change the color. It's also up there my recent lease. Uh, and then we can just grab from those libraries. So, oh, all right, there we go. So let's start header. And then what I want to do is because we have six seasons, I really want to start out with like a big uh, kind of welcome hit um, and make it so that we can cycle through the seasons because we have different ones and each one has a different theme. I almost want to do something that's really interactive right when you land. And I know that we hate the idea of like the initial slider of like big image kind of slider. I kind of want to take a riff off that and see if we can make it a little more interesting and a little more interactive. So you're, you're just trying to make my life complicated tomorrow, aren't you? That, that's literally like the only thing I want to do. Um, yes. <laughs> is as complicated right, as like possible. It. Yeah, so like but, let's go ahead and- When you, are, when you ahead. are designing an element like this, a very large header feature section, what's going through your mind? Like, how do you decide whether it's gonna be videos or, or you know, uh, photos, whether it's gonna auto go to the next one or what's going on there? Yeah, I'm really thinking about how I would want to experience it. Like if I was, it's almost like a conversation. So I'm thinking of if I was telling my friend about this thing, uh, how would I want them to engage with that? How would I want them to hear the story? And so I'm really trying to tell the story and uh, for the different seasons, there is like a different feel. And so I'm gonna start with our summer camp season, which is what's happening right now. We're in the middle of our summer camp season. Um, and it's very like woodsy and homey and kind of community driven. And so I want something that immediately has the story of, oh, it's it's campy, it feels woodsy, uh, but then it also has big information about what we want to communicate. So I'll probably have a background that gives us like the tone of the of the season and kind of the tone of the conversation and then some big copy up here that gives us like the meat of the content uh, mm -hmm. and then the rest is kind of going to be visual interest for you to hopefully engage with a little bit further sounds good uh and again we've pulled a bunch of things into our creative cloud libraries just for ease of use uh, and this is a wood texture that we've been using uh in our season so i'm just going to pull this out and we're going to mask it into this shape uh, to kind of give it a little bit of oomph. 
And which season are you starting with? Are you starting with the 60s season or? Yes, how, I think I'm going to work my way backwards. I think the, the season that we're currently on, which is summer camp, has like the most theming. And so I think maybe we can start there and it'll be easier to like get the ideas through. Um, and then some of the earlier seasons were like, it's blue. And so that'll be a little bit less visually interesting, but I think if we start here, then we can kind of work our way backwards. And I don't know about you, but I look back on my previous videos and previous podcasts and things like that. And like the further you go back, the more cringy they get. And oh, they were great at the time, but it's just absolutely. like- Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if I want to show, maybe we'll just skip season two because there was cringy and the background looked bad and the audio sucked. And so we'll go one to three to four, you know. Yep, as I was researching this, uh, I was looking back to like grab thumbnails and stuff. And I was watching some of the original episodes and I was like, this is what the show was? Like, that's what we did? Uh, it's crazy. And, you get uh, and so over here, what's nice is, so I had been working on it and so it pulled this through, but we use Stoltz, uh, which is an Adobe font uh, in all of our branding for Office Hours. It's kind of our call to action, big pop, um, H1 kind of thing. And so what's nice is I can use this uh, Creative Cloud library, which I've shared with Howard. So we go mm -hmm. in tomorrow, I can just uh, go ahead and, uh, add this in here and it's going to add in the uh, the character style. So I can add in character style and just say, hey, I want this to be maybe call out. Uh, and then when we're creating something, it will stay in that size, in that font, we'll be able to standardize that kind of across the board. Just as a side note, I, I loved watching you like frantically trying to find the character style label. Because when you're when you're talking and you're streaming and you're trying to concentrate, you just forget where things are. And you're like, yep. what are these is character style, but I'm streaming and I'm talking and I can't read right now. There it is. Yes. Um, so yeah, but what's it, nice about this is, you know, I don't have that font on my computer. I don't have it synced anywhere. But because Andrew shared the library with me, once I start creating a document using that library, because it's an Adobe font typeface, it's going to automatically add it, which is great. Yes. Uh, and it syncs across, which is just the greatest if you're working with clients, if you're working with other designers, it's awesome to just be like, cool, it's done. Like you don't have to find anything or do anything. It's just kind of there. Um, and so I always want to keep in mind when I'm telling the story in this initial land that it's it needs to read like a book, right? Even though we're going like vertical scroll, you still want them to read like a book, right? Left to right, go down, left to right, let go down. So we're going to do it in chunks. And I definitely want the kind of zingy information right here up top left. And then we'll kind of go down from there with a little more information and probably call to action. And then this area will be for a kind of visual. So I want to hit multiple senses with a story that I'm trying to tell. Yeah, I love that because there's been so many studies done on long form landing pages and heat maps and all that fun stuff. And the further you go down, it's like very bright red at the top because people are focused on there. And then the further you go down, just get blue, 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 blue. And by the time you get to the bottom, it's like a, such a small percentage of users have actually got down that far that you really want to focus your information at the top. But at the same time, you don't want to overload people with too much information. I see that a lot from early on designers who are just kind of starting out is they'll look at a, a landing page. They'll start off with just the 1920 by 1080 viewport and they'll just cram so much information up there that becomes a little bit distracting and overwhelming. So yep. it's finding that fine balance. And also, you know, having some sort of information there that gets people interested in scrolling to see the rest. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and I'm gonna change the verbiage on this. I am, I think that I have gotten in the habit of changing verbiage on things so that I have a better layout, if that makes sense. So there was like a mm -hmm. weird, I think the P was sticking down too far right here and I didn't like where it was. And so instead of redesigning around it, I'm like, let's rewrite this copy so that we don't have as much of like a weird hang down there. And now it fits perfectly in this little uh, negative space. There you go. I do that all the time, especially with my scripts for my videos. If there's a word that's just not sounding right or I can't pronounce what I'm, what I'm saying, I'll just com completely change the sentence or the word and move on. Yep. Uh, so I'm gonna pull in a little wood sign and we've been using this. And I think that it's going to be uh, a call to action button right here, which is kind of the thing that you want them to do on that page. Um, and so I think on some of the other seasons, it'll just be a regular button, but I think it'd be fun to have this nice little wood sign in here as just Ooh, a, fun. right? Just like a fun little mm -hmm. extra. And I think that, that might set 
uh, a little bit of a tone for us that as we continue into some of the other ones, maybe we do do little custom things um, or maybe they just stay buttons, but I think it'll be a fun start. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So this is kind of the general idea. And again, I love to just iterate. I'm never locking things in as they go. I always am just like throw it on the table and then eventually we'll sort it out to where it needs to be. Yep. Um, and so I'm not crazy about how literally all of this type is, but it's there and it will be in that, in that zone somewhere. Uh, I wish, I wish I can show some of my documents that I've been working on. And it's just like, you start off with a document and whether it's in Photoshop or XD or whatever, and you've got one little artboard and everything's nicely placed. And then you're like, what if the text is over on the right? The artboard, you move the text over. All right, not bad. What if the background is a different color? You duplicate that. And then by the end of it, like the artboards don't even relate to what you're actually designing. Yes. I have so many documents where if you were to open it up, actually I have one here somewhere. I'm not gonna switch over to my screen because there are probably some like confidential stuff in there. but. It's a you know document of just thumbnails for videos. But then I get an idea of like, what if I recreate the Instagram icon in like a skeuomorphic fashion? And I don't want to create a new document because I don't want to save it anywhere. So I'll just create it there. Then I'll create something else that's kind of related. And then like three months later, I'll be like, I did that icon a while back. Let's go find it. And then it's something in some random document that I forgot about. It's like, Ugh. yes. The amount of times that I am working on a document that is like, water logos and then suddenly i'm just like cool here's a thing for a bakery that i was working on that's just somewhere on this artboard like yeah that's how it works yep designer problems yeah you eventually just save it out to a different file and you're like all right now it works Sometimes. Um, so i almost want to do like a netflixy kind of thing um mm -hmm. with this and i have a couple ideas with this header and all of them are going to be difficult for you uh, <coughs> um <coughs> That's what you I get. For, I forgot how to breathe. I do deserve that. I've been stricken down by the gods of Photoshop. Um, is I, I want to do almost like a kind of title card that you can shift through. And as you shift through these, it will kind of augment these elements. And I know that you can do different kind of states, animation, screen kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm thinking that's something we can do, right? If we can kind of scroll through the elements that it can change out the headline or the button or whatever. Sure. So you won't be able to activate those states on scroll, but you can certainly use like clicks or taps, or you can cool. use separate artboards and use drag. So there, there's definitely options, but no scroll yet. So, cool. uh, and that's good to know. And it's always nice to be working uh, in collaboration with the person that's going to be implementing those. Uh, because I mean, I think a lot of times uh, us more like graphic minded people are like, let's do all the things that go crazy. And then it goes to the person who's going to prototype an XD. And they're like, yeah, so that idea you have is just like totally going to break everything. And you're like, oh yeah, that doesn't make sense. And so it's nice to have you here. So we don't have to have that conversation after the fact. Yeah. We hear that so often from developers, you know, you design something way over the top in XD or whatever it might be. And then you hand it off to the developer, like, okay, Go, go ahead and do this. And they're like, huh? Yeah. How does this even, like, none of this is even possible. Yep. So yeah, I, I, I love the idea of communicating with your developers or designers or stakeholders right from the beginning, because you need to know what they're capable of. Because there are some like very over the top things you can do in the development world. Um, I think the Elevate app on the, on iOS, I don't know about Android, but I always refer to that because it has incredibly over the top, well-built animations and effects. So th things like that are possible, but not every developer knows how to, you know, they don't have that level of skill. So yep. understanding what they're capable of is gonna help you as a designer, not waste time and also, you know, provide a, a something that can be developed a little bit easier. Yep, uh, and we just did my favorite hack here is to make like arrows and hearts is just make a square and then put a really bubbly stroke on it. Um, if you take it up far enough, it turns into a heart, which is just my favorite thing. Uh, if I ever need to make a heart shape, it's always just a corner that I've put like a super thick stroke on that's bubbly. Um, and so I wanna do some little arrows here to kind of give that idea. And I think we're gonna try to float this a little bit. I'm not very impressed with your heart, Andrew. I know. I think that's... that the XD users in the, in the chat, they're probably gonna call this out, but there's a fun little Easter egg in XD where if you're on the polygon tool and you enter the less than three, like a, like a ASCII heart symbol yeah. in the sides and you press return, it turns into a heart. 
Okay, well, I'm... <laughs> Come on, Photoshop, get I, on our level. I definitely think we need a counter for like Photoshop and XD. And I think that that's an XD tick. I think that XD <laughs> up by one. I'll show that one tomorrow. Yes, please do. Uh, and oh, I didn't actually hit the right hotkey. Control J. That's what I wanted. There we go. That just Control J just makes a copy of it. Um, so if you're working there to want another one on the other side, you can just command J or control J on mine, uh, which is weird. I always talk in Mac hotkeys, but I've been on PC forever. Uh, and so uh, my brain just breaks when I see on the screen, I'm like, what's control? Um, okay, so the idea is basically going to be that like this kind of key art can switch out and that will help to augment what the information is for each season kind of as we go in that big header. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanna add a little bit of dimension here. And so we can do that a couple ways. I can do an outer glow. I almost never do drop shadows. I always do an outer glow because I want it to look like it's lit kind of top down. Um, but for the sake of this, I kind of wanna do like this little fun floaty shadow. So we're just gonna grab an ellipse here um, and make sure that it goes underneath that rectangle. And I will name these for you, Howard. I'm so sorry about the chaos that's <laughs> happening. Oh, um, I've, I've, I've received files before that just have hundreds of layers and it's like rectangle 4,209. I'm like, yep. what am I supposed to do with this? Yes, welcome to chaos. And this is why, this is why a lot of a lot of designers have been asking the XD team, when are you gonna allow um, XD documents to be opened in Photoshop? Or, you know, why why is share mode so important over whatever it might be? My, my developers, need a Photoshop document or whatever it is. And the reality is when we talk to developers, they're like, no, please, we don't want uh, we don't want to be able to open an XC file in Photoshop and then have like thousands of layers that we have to sift through. We just want the designer to mark the layers that we need and we can download them all at once from share mode or from the prototype. Yep. All right. That's so a let's see if we can nice looking shadow. Very subtle. Little, yeah, just a nice little just a little something. What about so? Oh, I rasterized it and so I ruined it. All right, let me. <laughs> uh, the joys of design when you think that you're like, man, this is such a great hack. And then you have hit the wrong button at some point and you're like, mm, it's wrong and it's my fault. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go here. And I always just ellipse and then we just blur it out and that gives it a nice uh, look. Let's just convert that to a smart object so we have it there. Nice blur and then take the opacity down quite a bit. And then that way we can use our transform. Kind of just pull that down and it should, there we go, fix that up each time. Nice little blur. Fancy. Looks good to me. And I love those arrows, how, you know, the thickness of that, the weight. You don't see yes. that very often, but with this landing page that I'm looking at, you know, the, the text is pretty heavy itself and it just kind of goes with that vibe of the rest of the design. Yeah, something about office hours feels like bubbly. And so I think that mm. the weight and especially matching to the type, which I 100% did intentionally. Um, I think that that actually works really well. Thanks for that. Yeah, that works great. That was a great choice, Andrew. Thanks. Um, all right. So I'm just going to kind of group some things up here um, and name them for you to make sure that we are looking better. Uh, this is going to be our feature. This is our shadow. Uh, wood sign, texture, this is going to be background. All right. And then our rectangle here is the header. I'm actually going to bring this way up uh, and just put it in its own group because I want to make sure that we keep it um, in kind of sections. I know it's going to be easier for you if everything's mm -hmm. in sections. So we're just yes, going to name this hero section. All right. And on the header, we do need one more thing, and that is a nice little search. So again, I'm just going to grab a rectangle here and pull it out. Um, we talked a little bit, and I think maybe if we get there tomorrow, this could be a fun place to show off some voice features. Mm. Maybe we have like a voice search of some sort. That could um, be interesting. Right? All right. So we can go in here and just like in XD, uh, we can round these corners, which is, I think my favorite addition to any Adobe product was when they introduced the rounded corners. Uh, at least the, the ability to grab the nodes and do it. Yeah. Um, it just saves so much time. It's such a simple, well, it seems simple. Probably on the back end, it's probably not, but you know, it's such a small little addition, but it just makes your life so much easier. Yep. Uh, all right. So, so to wreck uh, in the chat 
if I'm mispronouncing your name, I apologize. Um, they're asking, what is the advantage of using Photoshop instead of XD? Ooh, um, I think that for me, I'm more comfortable in Photoshop. XD feels newer. And I know that a lot of people, because Photoshop has the history, it's almost like the like legacy of it. Uh, I, I think I'm just more comfortable here than XD. Um, and I think the ability to be able to just lay stuff out in something that I'm familiar with and then take it over to XD and it's like ready to go into the next step uh, for me is nice that I don't have to like learn the interface of XD too deeply. I'm like, oh, Photoshop, I can get it there and then it will just be over there. Um, and so for me, that's it is it's just convenience. And I think that's the main thing. You know, obviously Photoshop has additional features that XD does not have, but you can of course open images from XD in Photoshop, edit them and save them and they go back to XD. But I think being comfortable with the application that you're using is the key because a lot of times you can do something faster in a slower application because you're more comfortable with it than you would do in a faster application, if that makes any sense. Yep. Oh, so are... yeah, you know, technically you could probably design this experience a lot faster using Adobe XD. And maybe we'll do that tomorrow if we have some time. We'll just recreate it at the same time in Ooh. each of our applications. We'll, we'll see Ooh. if we have time. Um, but if you're not familiar with Adobe XD or vice versa, then you're probably, cause I'm probably gonna take a lot more time because you have to learn where things are. You have to struggle with shortcuts and that sort of thing. So use what's comfortable for you. Yep. Uh, and so I'm going to leave that for now for like our top section, just so we have the idea and I'm going to start moving on. So I want to, because we have so many seasons, I want to have somewhere that we can scroll um, to kind of scroll through the seasons. Uh, that's a little more interactive. That isn't as big and poppy. That's just kind of a quick reference with some information. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that we can do scrollable areas in XD, yep. correct? So what we're, I'm going to do is kind of design that, it would be easiest for you, right? If it just designed to keep going off the artboard, right? Like if I just designed uh, a path or put two or three there that we could repeat off the side. Sure, we can do that. Cool. All right, so we're gonna do a header here and we're just gonna say, um, find the season for you. Nothing like typing in white. It's there somewhere. It's it's there somewhere. That's, yeah, that's, that's what counts. Um, yep. and so I think, let's see here again with that layer selected, I can just come in here and I'm going to use this blue. Um, that's kind of what we've been using for office hours as one of our key colors, mm. uh, and take this back to our stolts of bold and make this our header center align that there. And then we'll align it to the center here and kind of scale up. And I think that for me, another thing of working in Photoshop is there's a lot of technicalities, I think, in XD that I would be intimidated by, right? Like I would be figuring out like exactly what the size of this would be in going pixel by pixel. But here I'm able to just like grab it, transform, grab, transform, grab, transform, and then I can come back and do that. Um, and I'm sure that you could probably do it that way in XD. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, it feels like I'm supposed to do it that way in Photoshop. So it feels more comfortable. Um, I would right. feel like I was doing it wrong if I did it that way in XD. I think I see what you're, me you're meaning because XD is, it's very pixel perfect. Yes. Even though you don't have to keep things on the, the, you know, the grid and you don't have to follow eight pixel grids and that sort of thing. But I, I totally get what you mean. Photoshop, it's just, you don't have that pressure of keeping things perfectly aligned with your grids and your guides and all that fun stuff. You can just kind of free form and design like crazy. Yep. Um, so for this, we have our little title cards here. And I, I know that there is a feature that like basically takes one thing and then makes like a bunch of it, right? Like you can just like drag it out to like keep that like structure going. Yeah, it's the repeat grids. Okay, cool. Uh, so if I just do a couple of these with like the title content or whatever, you can take that and just repeat it over, right? Or do you need everyone built out? No, I can, uh, just one of them. And all I would need separately are those images, whether cool. they're in the library or they're provided on a document or even a Google sheet or something like that. Um, and then for the, the text layers, those could be provided either, I mean, of course you can dive in and you can manually override those and just type them all out, but you can also give them to me in like a text document or part of a Google sheet and I can just import those directly in. 
Magic. I know. Is that right? like is that like a, a like a data mergey kind of zone? Through it's a it's a plugin by oh uh, uh, Impeccable. Create okay. Google Sheets plugin, and it's so cool because you can create a repeat grid with like hundreds of items, and then you just have a Google Sheet that someone on your team who likes spreadsheets. We all have. There's all. There's always one person. Um, I hate spreadsheets, it's but they me. can just. I'm the one. Ugh. They can just fill out the spread of the, the Google sheet with one column could be the season title. Other column could be a description. Other column could be a link to the image. And then you can just import all of that at once. That's incredible. And I, mm -hmm. uh, we did a daily creative challenge in illustrator working with variables, which is similar idea. It's similar to kind of data merging in InDesign and mm -hmm. When I realized that I could make hundreds of something in a matter of seconds and save my time by just leveraging spreadsheets, like you can import images, you can import copy, you can import vectors, backgrounds, and it just flows them. Uh, yeah. It's, I mean, it just blows my mind some of the stuff that you can do there. And I bet for the next several weeks after that, you just, every project had hundreds of something just because I, you could. I literally, like I would get assignments from clients and I'd be like, okay, how can I data merge this? In what way can I make this <laughs> totally wrong, but somehow very, very right? Yeah. That's what I did when XD finally added inner shadows and um, angular gradients. Every project from that point forward had obnoxious inner shadows it had angular gradients and I just went bonkers with the skeuomorphic stuff. Some yes. of it came out okay, but it's like way over the top just because I could. Yeah, why not? Yeah. That's, that's actually like a good reason most of the time to do something is because you can. There's yeah. so many times I'm playing an illustrator and I'm like, this isn't going to work. This is going to break something. And then I do it and I'm like, we're going to do this because it didn't explode. So we're going to yeah. like, we're just going to leave it like that. Of course, um, and, all right. and we're going to become not, not to give too much information, but we're going to be releasing a feature at Adobe Max, and it's going to be sim similar to that. Just because Ooh. I can, I'm going to be doing this thing in all of my projects. Yes. When do we get um, wand integration? Like, if we like, I know we have the the out of the pencil, but I want to be able to design just like with a wand at some point. Like, we can get gesture recognitions, RFD chips, and I want just like new document, so, and it just pops. So. Um, I was I was going to try to make a joke that at Adobe Max we're integrating wands, but that would be stupid. Um, so we do have in XD we do support key and gamepad triggers. Now, of course, a wand is not a key or a gamepad, but there are third-party applications that can essentially take an input device like a Bluetooth wand uh -huh. and tell other applications that this is actually an Xbox controller or a keyboard. So you could theoretically hook up your wand, like a little Harry Potter over there, um, and hook it up to your computer. Use this third-party application to trick Adobe XD to think that it's a keyboard or a gamepad. And you can just sit there and interact with your little prototypes with your little wand. I can picture Andrew doing this at like four in the morning. I I was going to say, like, so uh, I stream on my personal Behance uh, a bit and we've been doing like video game streams because I'm like, hey, like we love doing design here. But then on Fridays, we're just like, let's wind down and like play some video games and stuff. And now there is definitely going to be a stream coming at some point when I figure out how to do that. And it's just going to be me standing in my room, just like designing through like interpretive dance. And it's that's all it's going to be. Sensors I, I'm, hooked I'm up it. everywhere. Ooh, I'd love to design with voice, like entirely with voice. So Cameron, I forgot his last name, Cameron something. I don't think he works at Adobe anymore, but he used to work on the voice team. And he released a video ages ago. I think it was focused on Mac, the Mac OS voice integration and accessibility options. And he, he designed an entire project using just his voice. I don't think he touched his mouse or keyboard once he just used his voice to do it it was very impressive heck yeah that's awesome that would be mm -hmm. so fun uh all right i want to i want to like keep kind of the the structure that we're using of different sections um but when i'm thinking about like information in the story right that we're telling is we're going to do a bit more work up here with different variations of this 
Uh, but then I want you to be able to see like what the seasons are, just kind of quick scroll if you didn't get it up here and you don't want to look through each of these, kind of a secondary catch all. And then I want somewhere that's a featured episode. Um, and so because we're doing a season right now that is summer camp, we're going to feature our first episode of this season to get everyone uh, kind of on the same board. Mm -hmm. And so I want to use the sections. Um, but I think one of my favorite things that people do, especially in case studies and on websites, is when right they have a section like this that you think is like two sections but it actually is a section that's cropped like this so that the white here becomes almost like a faux overlap um to where the content doesn't necessarily go over but it looks like you're kind of creating this dynamic overlaps and it's like nope it's literally a slide to where the break just isn't on the edge of the slide it's just a little bit above and it gives you that nice illusion All right. I have no idea what he's talking about. I know it's uh, okay. So like, huh? So I'm let's, sure okay. if I saw it, I would. Yes, know. let's do an example here. I'll, I'll example it. So let's say that this is our section, right? And so if we're doing like a Behance case study, right, where we're uploading it in just slides, 1920 by oh, 1920 by 1080s. In theory, this green part would be like a slide. But then what we could do is create some kind of organic shape. Right. So then maybe we want it to have some kind of cool ellipse thing underneath it is just mm -hmm. cheating the edge like that. So that in reality, where'd my rulers go? Where did my rulers just go? Uh, control this one. I think I cleared all my rulers. All right. So in theory, there is one here and then the other one ends like right here. And so Got by it, just okay. having this overlap, it looks like it's this like weird bubble, but it's actually just like a square and then another square that just matches color. Okay, okay, yes. now, now I get it, okay. Yes, so what happened here? Some weird thing happened. All right, cool. Um, let's just control Z and do that, there we go. So I wanna have a nice little thing here. I'll probably put a shadow on this so it looks a little more kind of glowy, uh, a little more floaty. Mm -hmm. um, and then a nice little headline to go over here. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Perfect. Exactly where I want that. All right. And we're going to need another cleanup here in a second because I can already tell my layers. Yeah, are that color is just not working. <laughs> yeah. Let's nice little blue on green there. All so right. Richard is asking, how do you determine the sizes of the sections after the landing page or it doesn't matter? Um, I think for me, it's how much information that I have to give them. Uh, and so here it's like, if I want you to interact and especially with a side scroll, I just want you a little bit to kind of give that side scroll. You only need about a thumbs amount of size, if that makes sense. So I'm thinking about mm -hmm. how they're gonna use it. Um, and then when I wanna pop out, I'm gonna use that a little bit wider and here again, a little more visual interest so that it kind of keys them into, hey, you can scroll on this part, but then this part is just for you to click on. It's just like a little call out kind of pop out. Um, and so I think it, it is really dependent on what the message is for that section. Featured episode. Let's see here. This is Trail Guide. Episode one. You look like one of those beekeepers that you uh, come across in Pokemon. Yes. Oh, that's true. How did you know that. that I was a bug specialty? That's the one, the bug that's, specialist. Yep, exactly. Uh, all right. That was not right. Let's put this at like, sure, there. No, let's put this higher than that. Let's put this over there. That's too much. Let's put this uh, somewhere here. Yay, trial and error. All right. Uh, so That's we have we that as designers. We can spend hours just like 72, 71. Yep. It's 70, true. 73. I, the amount of times that I like sign off on something by saying like, I don't hate it. Like that is the biggest compliment for me. Uh, because if I hate it, I'll tell you. And I'm like, you know, what? I don't hate it. It's like, it's not great, but yeah, sure. It yep. works. I use that phrase all the time. Yep. I don't uh, hate it. All right. So there are a couple things that we could do here. Um, we could do kind of a button call out. Um, we could do a little play thing over here. Let's do that. Let's put a little play button over here. Mm -hmm. um, and that way we can at least show like, hey, check out this video. Ooh, let's see if this hotkey works. It did not. Uh, 
I always try to do the illustrator hotkeys for switching the stroke and fill when I'm in other programs. And I think that, that the shift X only is the hotkey in illustrator. Yeah. That's one thing that drives me crazy. Sometimes you switch back and forth between different applications and you try to use the different shortcuts and they don't work or they do completely different things. Yep. All right. So we're just going to draw grab triangles here, drag this in the middle. Wow. That looks terrible. Uh, and align. And this is probably my favorite thing about designing anything is aligning things to other things. And I know that's like the most specific reference, but there's something about like selecting one thing and then aligning everything to that thing that just feels so satisfying to me. I know it's great. Val yes. says, makes Andrew look like he's about to give an Animal Crossing quest and I'm living for it. Oh, that's true. That's mm. very true. Uh, all right, so that button's obnoxious, but we'll tighten it up once uh, we get to our second pass. I'm gonna figure out what I wanna do here. And I think that I do want it to have some kind of button, uh, but I want the button to break this barrier. And so I think that there's gonna be a little bit of type that happens underneath right here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, big difference right there. So that was point type. So if you just click, uh, that means that it starts at a point and then just continually goes. But I wanted area type, which I need to click and drag out kind of a box for us to use. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then I want a button and so something's going to have to give here because it's not all going to fit. But I want a button that overlaps like this. So it gives us a little more dimension on that. Uh, and maybe it'll be a call out. I'm not sure what it is yet. Uh, but I'm just thinking visually, I want it to be that, which again, I think may be a big contrast between the designer brain and the UX designer brain is like, oh, I want some visual thing contrast here, even though this is probably the like worst flow to just have a random thing right here. It could be, but hey, run with it and see what happens. Right. Um, yeah, I'm sure you'll get some pushback. People asking, why is there a play button and why is there a button button? But you know what? Run with it. Yeah. And I think I I have kind of conditioned myself that if I hit that point, so like you saw that I just like made the the artboard larger. If it hit mm -hmm. a point where I'm like, there are a lot of things wrong here. There are, there are like multiple ideas that like none of them are quite working. Usually I'll just skip it and come back. Cause I'm like, okay, there is an idea here. That's all I need right now at this point is just an idea. And so since there is one, great, we'll come back and figure out what that idea actually is a little bit later. Um, but it's like, cool, that section is going to be some kind of feature episode thing. Val is asking, where was it? She says, so Howard, what is it like actually seeing the, the concepting slash design process of the content you will be receiving? Because as I understand, normally you might get something like this after it's done and a client may send it over as a concept. Is it better to be able to give feedback along the way? I think so. Um, I think it's nice being able to see this come to life in real time. Obviously this probably doesn't happen very often because most people probably don't stream with the person they're gonna be handing off to. But you know, just looking at the top section, that header, originally Andrew wanted to do this like scrolling thing that triggers interactions. And I was able to sit here and tell him, you know, that can't be done at the moment in XD. So let's try this way. And, you know, thankfully Andrew's a, a very good designer, so I don't have to give too much critique as he's doing this, but yeah, there, there have been times where I've been working on a project and I've been left in the dark and I get the, I get the thing and it's like, Oh, okay. And I have to redo the entire thing from scratch because I can give feedback to that person, but I feel that it's just, it's just long gone. It'll be faster if I just redid the whole thing than if we just went back and forth on every little bit. So being able to do it, and if you, you know, if you know you're working on a much larger project, then I think sending maybe this in bits and pieces, send the landing page or that top section first, just so they have an idea of what the color scheme might look like, what the type might look like, and maybe the general flow and then kind of go from there, just kind of break it up in sections and just send those over as they are finished. Yep. Uh, so what we're doing here, I wanted to give it a little bit more of like a texture feel. So I'm gonna to try to do this idea uh, inspired by, I don't know where my brain goes when I think of like doing things and in interactions in XD is I want to do like this hover state 
that's almost like you're in kindergarten and you have like those little like behavior cards that you put into like a slot and they like kind of pop up and down like you like it's just like a little you know index card that you kind of put into a little notch uh and so i want to highlight some of our community members as like little tiles but the hover state kind of just pops them up and down does that make sense i said a sure. lot of words that like kind of made sense and i think once you get there maybe you can no, tell me I, if it's I real think it not. does make sense but okay. yeah another one of those things i need to visualize um yeah Andy and so is just, asking, oh yes. Andrew, do you take your Photoshop designs into XD before handing off to development or how do you explain scroll behaviors and interactive elements, triggers, etc.? So here's literally what I do. Uh, oh gosh, I just punched my earphones. That was terrible. Uh, so literally what I'll do is I will go into Zoom or I'll go into OBS or whatever I use. And I will literally sit there and be like, okay, cool. So here's the site I'll screen share. Be like, so here's the site. And so like when it scrolls, I want like some kind of interaction so that like, uh, this is the idea that I want. Right. And I'll click on, let's say this wood texture and I'll literally record a video and just be like, cool. So when you scroll, I want it to kind of like do this thing. So like, it just like moves a little bit in the background. So there are so many videos of me just walking through that I'm sending to a developer that I'm clicking and dragging things and just moving like oh man when you know this interaction happens i want this to kind of like fade out that way or you know move over here and i'm literally clicking and dragging to give them the idea because i mean that's the quickest me way for me to communicate and i'm sure that if i showed you that howard your brain goes on to like how do i actually make that happen um and i don't need to really worry about that a lot of the time so i can say hey here's the idea i kind of want it to do this and then they can kind of pick it up from there I like it. Having some sort of visual helps tremendously, especially for developers who might not be designers. Yep. And a lot of developers are not designers because they're developers. That's what they focus on. So, you know, being able to visualize just a static image in motion is sometimes very difficult for them. Yes. So making a video or a live stream or even just like drawing some arrows on yep. a mock-up can help tremendously. Yep, right here. I didn't want to build out the rest of it. And we had talked about like, oh, we uh -huh. can do the repeat, we can do the scroll. And so I'm like this thing, but more of it. All right, so I want to kind of create this realistic kind of paper cut shadow thing. So what I think I'm going to try to do is try to fill just a gradient in here and round these corners out um, and see if we can get this looking like an actual thing. Let's round Sounds this good here, to me. Uh, right? <laughs> Make it look like an actual thing. <laughs> uh, see if we can take this down to maybe. Let's see. Monir is asking, yeah. what do you focus more when you present your work? And how do you make a storytelling in your case study? So I think he's, he's, when, I think he's asking when you're presenting your work, what's the main focus that you want to, you know, drive to your stakeholders, developers, whatever it might be. And then when you do a case study afterwards, how do you tell that story? Yeah, so um, I'm always trying to, when I'm presenting, I like rehearse my presentations. Uh, and actually, if you go to my Behance, um, there is a video in my like video profile or whatever to where I recorded a branding pitch that I did with a client and I recorded the pitch to them. And then I did a stream where I went back and did like play-by-play -play commentary and like critiqued myself on my pitch to them. Uh, and so that would be a great resource if you're looking for like just thoughts to have conversations, to have mistakes that I made in the pitch that I'm like, oh man, I should have said this, or I should have led them in this direction. And I talk about how to be careful about the words you're using and start using key phrases before they find out about them and really just start to present that story. Um, so there's a great video there. And then for case studies, there's a whole season of office hours for you. Um, and uh, if someone wants to grab the link. I know that there's a playlist out there of all the episodes of Office Hours. You also can go to behance.net slash live slash students, I believe, and it's there. Um, but we have a ton of episodes about case studies, portfolios, how to lay those out and kind of how to tell a story. Um, but it's all about storytelling. You never just want to show your work. You always want to tell a story. Yes, because I see very often, we used to do, when I was hosting Adobe Live ages ago, we used to do uh, portfolio reviews and uh, challenge reviews and things like that. And it was often Behance portfolio um, projects. And 
often I would see beautiful cover image yep. go into the, the post and it's just another image and that's it. And as someone who might be hiring a designer, I want to know everything. I know, I know we want to showcase the pretty pictures and the end result, and that's great. You can definitely do that. But I want to know how you got to that point. What did the mock-ups look like? What challenges did you go through? Why did you choose to redesign whatever it is that you're redesigning? Um, show me your revisions. That is big to me because you can probably attest to this, Andrew. I can't think of a time where I've sat down at my computer and knocked out the final product on one artboard and that was it. Yep. There's always like, there's always at least like two or three different revisions, probably 700. And each one is different and usually better than the last. And they change for a reason. And we want to know those reasons. We want to know why did you change the background color? Why did you change the type? Why did you, you know, go in this direction or that direction? Because those things tell me as a potential hiring manager that you're really thinking about this stuff and you're not just throwing pretty pictures on a page. Because anyone, I don't want to say anyone, but a lot of people could just create pretty pictures. But if you're not trying to actively solve the problems, then you know the the business relationship is going to suffer a little bit. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I always tell people in case studies, especially, I need to know that it sucks before I know that it's good. So Ooh, like show that. me the sketches, show me all that stuff, so that by the time I get to the wow then it's really wow, right? If you just hit like right up front with like, here's the main thing, then the rest of the case study is like, okay, I already saw the thing. But if you start out with like, man, these sketches are bad. Like this idea like might not get there. And they're like, oh, oh, oh my gosh, they got it. Like you want them to mm -hmm. discover that with you. Uh, all right, let's do, I have some art here. This is by um, Glennis. This is one of our featured uh, star campers of our community, which if you want to join our office hours community, we have a thriving community on Discord. We hang out every Friday at 2.30 PM. Um, and we always pick a star camper uh, to show off some of their work. And so this is mm. one of them. Uh, Glennis, I believe the last name is somewhere. I can find that for you uh, and we can show them support. It's actually, if you want to find it, uh, it's in our Discord. You can go to bit.ly slash capital O-H cabin chat, I believe it is. Um, Val, if you can check that link, I'm not fully confident in it, but I think that it's uh, just O-H cabin chat uh, for this season. And what I'm going to do here to kind of give the idea to Howard is I'm going to mask this out to show that it's kind of going underneath. Uh, so I don't think that this will actually be the way that it ends up being built, but I kind of just want to convey the idea of like, this is masked into that space and kind of goes under. Let's see here. So let's pull all this back in. There we go. And I'm pretty sure I missed some, so we'll paint in the top. There we go. So now I can kind of show, hey, this is what may be the active state. And would it be helpful for you to show active and inactive just side by side? Yeah, that would probably cool. help. So let's say that this is maybe active state and we're gonna do mm -hmm. this is active feature. So that's when it's hovered over? Yes, oh, yeah, okay. I'll add hover. Hover feature, there we go. And then I'm just going to make a copy of that and pull it over here. What did I not get? You broke it. Oh, my auto layer is selected. Okay, there we go. I go back and forth as a design before between having the auto layer on and off. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just the most chaotic workflow. Like I would never I, I recommend it that to all anyone. The time. I yeah. just use the, um, what is it? The control, if you hold down control or command, you can click on a layer instead. Like you can, I think. Bye. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> Or maybe that's an XD, I don't know. Okay, it's not here. Okay, I was about to be like, well, my entire workflow is ruined. All right. Um, I know there's a way. So... Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm just like seeing things. There we go. So I wanna show again that like, it's gonna go kind of down and then as you hover, it will pop up. So it feels like it's almost this kind of card structure. Um, and then let's also add in. It is a thing. Okay, what is a thing? What is, how so do if you're we do on it? The, yeah, if you're on the move tool. Okay and you hold down hold down uh, control, I guess. Okay. Yeah, then you can click on a layer. <gasps> yeah, and it goes into groups and stuff. 
So you don't have to put auto select on. Thanks for joining our stream, everybody. That'll be it for today. And just gonna go lay on the ground for all the time he's wasted. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. So I can just come over here. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, mind blown. Good work, everyone. Uh, all right. So then I'm going to put in here, and this will be, uh, I believe, Glennis was the name that we had here. Yes. Uh, and we'll find the other half of that name at some point. But I want some kind of little uh, name pop out here that kind of maybe comes up on the feature. Boop. I think it was Gareth possibly in the chat earlier asked if this is like a guess who type thing. Ooh, oh, oh, it is. It totally is. Mm. Yes. Oh. If it wasn't, it is now. Yeah, uh, Tarek, uh, I'm actually mm. a dentist and I'm a big fan of Adobe applications and I'm spending my time watching. What is the best way for me to learn how to be creative with Adobe? Okay, my favorite thing is when non like creative professionals are hanging out mm -hmm. uh, because it's just, it's so fun to know that you guys are interested and want to be a part of this. Um, one, you can watch Office Hours on Friday, 2.30. Uh, two, every day, there are a bunch of daily creative challenges. Uh, Howard, do you kind of want to go over those and maybe how they could help? Yeah, so every, every two weeks, we run a creative challenge and there are usually nine challenges in total. And they are for a variety of applications. So we have Photoshop. Actually, I'm going to be running a Photoshop creative challenge in August. Um, we have Photoshop, Illustrator, XD, and sometimes a video application, either Premiere or After Effects. And it's geared at beginners. So if you're someone like uh, Tarek or um, you know a dentist or you're a plumber or a carpenter or whatever you might be, and you just kind of want to get into design, you're not sure where to start. These are perfect because you know we start basically from scratch and the challenges kind of get a little bit more progressively difficult over time, but they're still easy enough that uh, anyone who's not experienced can dive in and pick up these tools and learn something new. And by the end of it, you have nine challenges that you can showcase on your portfolio. You can build out a case study, whatever it might be. And, you know, it's not a competition, so you don't have to feel pressured to finish it by a certain date or finish it every day. And there's a wonderful Discord community for all those applications. Uh, people, you know, mentors and experts just giving feedback all the time on projects. So we see a lot of people continuously improving over time. And what's really cool about this is we've seen people like dentists and um, you know, accountants who have entered the or have taken part in the daily challenges. They're not designers, but they continuously participate. And now they're designers. They're working for design firms or freelance or whatever it might be. So if you're looking to for a switch, then that's a, that's a great place to start. Yes, please join us. One of us, one of us. All right. Um, cool. So I want to do one more kind of section at the bottom to highlight our Discord. I'm not happy with the effect that I want here. It doesn't have the like physicality that I want it to, but we'll come back to that. Um, there's something about like the, the I want it to have more dimension. So it feels like it's really like going behind. So I think I need some kind of shadowing on this, but we'll come back to that. Um, oh, I can add like 17 inner shadows in uh, XD. Please do that. Please, because all can. of that. Yes. Oh man, that's what I want. It's just like my feedback tomorrow is going to be continually asking you to just add more effects. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So I want to do one more section here that is just for our Discord, um, which is the greatest place. And I think that this is unique to Office Hours. I think this is true. I might be lying. Uh, I think Office Hours is the only show that has live voice chat during the actual show. Um, so as the show's happening, we're in Discord and we have a little uh, uh, channel that happens during the show that our audience is like hanging out in the voice channel, like talking with each other. Uh, and so we always mm. hop in there and say hi and we'll bring people on the show to get feedback or, you know, uh, ask questions and stuff. It's a very, very live show. So uh, if you come hang out, what's the cost? It's free. All of it. Ev everything's free. Everything here on Adobe Live is free. It is. I, I was trying to make a joke of like, you can pay me and Andrew like $10 a month or something, but no, it's free. No. Yeah. Everything's free. The challenges are free. free. The master classes are free. Um, I just hit my 58th, I'm almost at 60th masterclass. Is that next week? I think 
and each one's an hour long. So 60 hours of free content there. And there's, I've hosted a ton of different uh, daily challenges. There are probably hundreds of hours there. Yep. Yeah, all free, which is We are so six good. seasons into office hours. So there is tons of content for you. I think we're almost at, yeah, almost over 60. So there is tons of free content for you. Uh, yeah. If you can stalk me enough to find my address, you can send me Chipotle. I will not be mad about that. Yeah, um, yeah probably. Yeah. I can use some Chipotle cool. right now. I love Chipotle. I wonder if I can order Chipotle and have it delivered when the stream is over. Hey, Howard. I have, me- I have another meeting right after this, but. Hmm. This is totally off topic, but the amount of times that I have been on an active stream that is like a two hour stream over lunch and been like working, but then also had like a DoorDash up that's like back and forth of like, okay, how do I time this? So it's here exactly when the stream ends. Yep. Uh, I've done that so many times. Yes. Oh, I, I have too. Yep. It's the technology is great but it also yes. enables terrible behaviors. It does. Oh, and uh, someone says, I love free stuff. Tell me more. Well, let me tell you, Brittany, Office Hours is actually, I'm just going to keep plugging Office Hours. Office Hours is probably the king of free stuff here on Adobe Live. Um, we've got swag. We've got Creative Cloud subscriptions. We have mentoring sessions. We do giveaways all the time on the show. Um, and we will be doing one this Friday. Uh, we are doing a design along, which is going to be super fun. Uh, my co-host Nick and I will be designing on a brief and all of you will be designing alongside us and posting in discord. So it's going to be a fun time. We'll have prizes. So if you love free stuff, come out this Friday. Um, I'll throw prizes at you. It's my favorite thing to do. Have you ever designed underwear like briefs? I have to do a, a brief for oh, a brief brief, a brief brief. That's fun. That's really fun. I've so my like bucket list is to design a wrap for a plane. Like, I don't know why, but that's always been my that's bucket big, list. That's a big project, right? Uh, but I think briefs might be also on the on the list now, too. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quite a big contrast. Yes, the briefs. So briefs. What's, what's in your bucket look? list andrew well i want to design a plane also underwear or underwear yeah one of, one of the two <laughs> one of the two all right we got a little chaotic with our um layers here so i'm gonna go ahead and select some of these and kind of group them up uh, and so i feel like i've gotten my first pass pretty much down uh to where i want to be uh it's like the idea is there that i'm like yeah this is kind of the idea i want mm-hmm. um So I'm gonna do another pass and maybe we'll work on the top a little bit. We've got about an hour left, so we'll see where we get. Um, This one, we need to come back to and figure out where where is this layer? Oh (laughs) no. What did we do here? All right, Uh, this is the community tab. So those are hover features. Okay, so that's the community section. What all is in there? Is that the whole bottom? No, it's just that. Oh. Look at how organized that actually is. There you go. All right. Mohammed um, is asking, what is the font? Can you remind people where you got the font and what yes, it is? Yes, it is an Adobe font and it is just Stoltz, S-T-O-L-T-Z, S S T O L Z L. Stop, Stoltz, Stoltzl. <laughs> Yikes. There you go. Yeah, I love the, um, I, I love the weight of that, that typeface. I've been yes. big into, um, like really thick and heavy typefaces lately. Yep. Even though for some of the internal stuff, we, we, you know, we don't really use very large typefaces, but for my personal projects, like black and super heavy, it works. It really gets people's attention. Yep. Uh, Megan is asking, do we just search office hours on discord to join? I think there's a link, right? I think it was posted. I know Megan just joined, but let me see if I can find the link or Val can possibly, there it is. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it. Boop. There we go. There's the link. Yes. Join our discord. Come hang out with us. We're having a good time. We have homework from two weeks ago. We did a, a section on Lightroom and I uploaded some raw photos. And so that was our last episode. And each week, that's another thing. Uh, we like to give you merit badges because we're at summer camp. Of course, you need to earn merit badges. So we do give you homework to do um, some hands-on stuff. And it's either an outdoor adventure or it's a merit badge week. Um, and so you'll either have an activity to do to earn a merit badge, or you'll have an outdoor adventure to get away from your computer a little bit and kind of uh, clear your mind with a good creative concept. So I believe we're back on merit badge this week doing design wait you you have to go outside right 
We've been so we did a season I am of Office the Hours Discord right now. Right, yeah, I'm out. Uh, we did a season of Office Hours called Adobe Office Hours Abroad, and it was all about using the mobile apps for uh, the Adobe Suite. And it was kind of funny because we did it in the middle of COVID. We were just all stuck inside, and so we did a full 13 week season that was like when you're out and traveling, uh, but none of us could travel. But if you want a refresher and you're going on vacation, uh, Adobe Office Hours Abroad is a season that's all about uh, being on the go. Hmm. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna make a copy of this uh, kind of top section. And then that way we can show maybe what it will transition to or what another screen it could be. Um, and I also want to play around with an idea. So we'll see how far we get with this idea, but I'm just gonna make a copy down here. Um, and we're gonna call, we're gonna rename this title card. This is how it all begins. I'm just gonna try this idea. That's true. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you have 400 reports. Yep. 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 Uh, so I'm going to keep all of these kind of pieces where they are, but kind of change them out. Uh, and hopefully the idea would be that like it could transition between these and kind of be a thing. Uh, if not, then maybe not, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, so let's work on the background. And I like to keep some consistency with the elements. So this wood texture that's back here, I think is just going to turn into a brick texture. And we're going to do our season that was called To the Rescue. Hmm. Oh, this is a very aggressive brick texture. We're going to bring this texture down a little bit. Um, so To the Rescue help. was all about students would submit their issues they're having, problems they're facing, things they were working on. Um, and we would work with the students to give them advice on how to get through those problems, how to address them, how to kind of have the, the best results uh, for their efforts. Uh, all right, like so let's do this. So I love doing gradient masks here. Mm. And so we're gonna gradient map this. Um, and instead of doing like a black and white, like just saturation down, I love doing gradient maps of black and white. And that way you can perfectly adjust like how much you want on that image. Right. So for those who don't know what a gradient mask is, can you explain how it works? And I know, obviously, you know, the different colors affect or the different sides affect different shades and stuff of the gradient, but I'm sure you can explain a little bit better. Than totally. That. Yeah. So this is the, this side is the blacks and this side is the lights, right? So what we're doing yeah. is we're basically taking all of the, so if you think on a scale from one to a hundred, right? It's either 100% black or 0% black, or maybe 72% black. For each percent of that black, it is going to increase the tone, right? So instead of using the actual colors, it's the tones, right? So here, if anything is 100% black, I want it to be red. And you can see that a lot of that went red because it's very textural. But maybe if anything is, 50% black, right? Right in the middle here. I want that to be blue. And now you can see that all those gray things went blue. And then if anything is 0% black, maybe I want it to be yellow. And then you'll see all the whites go to yellow. So it's basically just reinforming instead of being black and white, each percentage needs to be assigned to a color, if that makes any sense. I kind of like that look though. It doesn't work with the, the text on top, but it I was going to say know. this. Yeah, this gradient I setup, I did it. it I, I did it and I was like, this is fun. Uh, we might bring that back for something. Uh, but <laughs> I loved using gradient maps um, for black and white because I can very easily write. This looks like it's kind of an opacity thing, but instead the blacks have just been taken to a really light gray. Um, and so it's easy to do without having to do a ton of augments. And there we go. Now we can have that nice texture in the background by just multiplying hmm, it down. I like that. That's, that's fun. So in the chat, Andy just posted an XD prototype of like a pop-up type of thing. Oh. Is that kind of what you were going for or something different? Let me look. Because that could work. The joys of having a screen right in front of your light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Peekaboo. It sounds like yes. Yes, 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 yes. This, yes, this is exactly what I want. There you go. Yes. Good job, Andy. Good job, Andy. All right, I'm I'm gonna save that. That's a uh, yes. That's what I want, and I and I think I see where I made the mistake is I went all the way to the edge, where yours is in a little bit, and it gives it more of that slide. So I think I need to mm. augment that when we get down there. I just had a very morbid thought for some reason. I don't know yes. why, but it it's not something you should probably incorporate on your page, considering you're talking about community members. But you know, you're going through this very camp vibe look, 
Mm -hmm. What if you had like in that section a, a dirt, and again, don't do this, but like the background and the, the foreground is kind of like dirt. And then you have that pop-up thing. It's like a tombstone with the person's, no, let's let's not go down that. Road. But <laughs> I love, maybe I love. like a sign instead of a tombstone. Yes. Yeah, like oh, yeah, a wood that is sign, fun. like a little campy thing or maybe yep. a tent. I don't oh, know, and just, maybe we can yeah. use this, uh, the button that we have here down below and it can be like a little sign that kind of pops up and down. Hmm. With a gopher holding it. Yes, gophers. Why not? Uh, all right, so version two of this uh, is going to be for Office Hours to the Rescue, which is kind of brick stuff. Um, and so let's go ahead and change out this title card here. In the future, we're just gonna change out these colors. And what's nice is I can kind of just replace and use the same elements, but update to the different looks. Oh, we're not gonna do that again because we already have that. Why would we try to mm. do that again? Uh, let's do this. All right, and I'm gonna get one I'll of these I'll post something about Camp Crystal Lake. There's an app or something. Oh, okay. I think, I haven't... isn't that uh, like Jason, like isn't Crystal Lake the like slasher Jason? Yeah, it seems like it. So maybe there's a there's a reference in there that I don't know. Val Val is like the absolute best with pop culture reference. Like that is yeah. the thing. I am the absolute worst. Like I haven't seen the majority of big movies and it's like yeah, I don't know. Yes, I missed Up until like all a few the years 80s ago. Movies. I have, I didn't see any Star Wars movies. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm like a massive space geek and science and nerd and. I just didn't have time when I was younger. I just never moved. And my wife is like, we need to change this. <laughs> we must fix you. All right. So that looks like bad. Um, and I think it's because this color is just not right. Let's go ahead and change this full on white. Boom. And then this brick is just too much. Let's take that way down. Just give it a little, a little bit of oomph. All right, so already getting a little bit of a different idea. Uh, and then let's replace this button and then we'll keep going on our second pass further down. Let's see if we can continue to make it look somewhat better. Uh, when we Bell's hit not happy fill, with me right now. Oh, that's because, okay, that's there, that's there. Here's this, there's that. Let's round this out. All right, now we have a button and we can delete our wood sign that is down here too so bernard right. wants to know how does he join the camp oh um you can simply show up this friday um we uh this friday 2 p.m pacific standard time uh this is actually a great week to join it's kind of our uh i don't know midweek it's our it's our field day um, and so it's just a fun episode. We're hanging out, we're having fun, and we'll kind of catch you up on where we've been this season and then where we're going. Uh, so this is the perfect time to join this Friday, 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and if not, you can watch through the uh, old episodes on YouTube, uh, behance.net slash live slash students, um, and follow up there. Or you can join the Discord, all those. I love it. Do you ever have... Um, I forgot the call. Were they alternate reality games or something or whatever it is? Um, do you ever like incorporate some of that stuff into your shows? Like one week, Nick might go missing or something. You have to solve the the case of, and people have to design like the different parts Ooh. of that mystery. I don't know if it's a murder mystery. I don't know what my mind is just in a weird place today, but um, that could be fun. That's a fun idea for like a show. Yeah. Mm. To do like almost clue but like with design yeah. and you like discover the answers i love that that's a fun mm. idea okay so this uh i'm not mad about i think that will be fine this is still a hot mess so let's readdress what's happening here uh so what's the idea that i want to communicate so this is always where whenever i get stuck i always go back to what do i want to say and how do i want to say it right and here mm -hmm. I am not sure what I want to say other than like, it's a featured episode. And so that's the problem is I'm not sure what I'm trying to communicate here yet. Um, and so I think what I want to communicate, what I think I want to do is just make this a full section. 
I think the like overlap pop out idea was just like didn't have a reason to be there. It was cool, but there was no reason behind it. And so I think that it needs to go to just being a regular full section. As much as I don't want it to be, uh, if you don't have a reason for it, it it usually is not supposed to be there. Yeah, sometimes as designers, we try to get fancy. And then we realize that was a dumb idea because it yep. just there's no need for that. And it just complicates things. And I think also we overthink things. Like in this section here, the the focus is the video. Yes. And you want to let people know that this is the featured uh, episode. Maybe you don't need any other text. Maybe maybe the button is just to view more episodes or something like that. You don't have to... I think it should be self-explanatory that video, featured video, button that says view more episodes. Yep. I agree. Or maybe it, maybe it says... Um... Maybe this is the question that we just had, that because this is the first episode of the season, that this is like a get started. So if you want to like join us where we are now, that like, hey, this is where you start or something. Um, and then that way it doesn't have to be like, oh, it's changing. It's just like, hey, or it, uh, it could be current season. Let's do get started. And then maybe we can have, oh, this is what we can do. This is maybe gonna get convoluted, you tell me. Uh, is this is a get started section. And then we have, um like ways to be involved so we have like the discord here we put information about like getting merit badges or kind of how you can get involved is that too mm -hmm. much to put here um it's probably too much i said it and no, it felt I like too it, much i think it could be okay if you don't overload it like if you put like a discord logo and then you put one of the existing badges and just say like earn badges um almost like a bullet list of all the things that fun you can get by joining this yep then you have to ask yourself if you have the discord logo up there do you want that section at the bottom that has discord as well yep uh so maybe this is the this is features so maybe like more than just a show i don't know okay title is going to go here let's get a badge in and then we can circle back because i like the idea of having like hey you can earn a badge here kind of thing mm -hmm. Uh, let me find one of our badges. And again, we're, 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 this is a whole new level. We're on a third program. <laughs> we're hopping into illustrator because that's where all of the other stuff is built out. Uh, and so I'm going to just grab this and bring it over into our creative cloud library so that I can have it in the other program. These are fancy. I kind of want one of these in real life, just like stick on my backpack. So speaking of giveaways at the end of the season, I'm going to say it now and just will myself into it happening. Uh, I'm going to put, we're going to put koozies. Like we're going to do this on a koozie uh, mm. and then do like a giveaway. So I'm saying that now and I think it's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, these badges are so fun and we, we made them for like, I want to do a physical thing. Yeah. Okay. So we'll probably need to put like a little circle behind this, but that's fine. You can bring um, this into, um, what is it? A, a substance sampler yes. or stager and you can put like actual fabric textures and stitching and things like that and make it look really like legit which is super new right like that's a, a few weeks in right so substance have a, has been around for a while but we re, we acquired them a while back as well but we recently released i think stagers new is sampler new too there were two or three new applications and then some of the older ones got updated and refreshed I've seen like an influx of just cool stuff that I'm like, I am jealous about this. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, so I like the idea of this badge being here in some element as like a thing. Um, I wonder... All right, we'll come back to that. Let's Because we have an actual action item, let's move on to the action item that we have right here, mm -hmm. uh, which we had figured out the problem was that it wasn't um that it needed to be like this to where it had a little more of an overlap so it could actually pop out um, let's see here let's delete this because we don't need it okay that a hundred percent is what we wanted it to be that's it's a crazy bit easier to understand now yep. yeah how it's just that little change made the world a difference. Crazy, isn't it? 
And yes, Gareth, Nick was missing. Uh, so Nick is the co-host of Office Hours and he was missing when we did Dimension, uh, but he still taught us a little bit. He was gone fishing. All right, so let's pull this down and then that just basically will stay under there. Okay, that definitely has more of the vibe that I wanted. Yes, yeah. I love having a standing desk because between here and here is somehow the deciding factor of if it's I know. good or not. I, I usually have my, my desk up, but I had a little back procedure the other day and it hurts to stand. So yeah, but I, I, I love just like looking back and cocking my head and it's just like, yeah. Okay, so maybe, um, maybe the flow and the story. Okay, let's go back to the drawing board of what our story is, right? So we're trying to get people, here's office hours, here's what it is. Uh, there are multiple seasons that you can engage with. Each one has a different topic. Mm -hmm. And maybe the rest of it becomes the story of, here's how you are, here's here's how it is for you or here's the community for you kind of thing and so that it's you know you can earn badges you can join discord and then maybe some community highlights so maybe these sections flip so that the story is a little more like come join us here's how and here are the people that already have i think that that's the story i want to tell yeah and i think it could be interesting in this community members section to highlight the fact that all of these designs were created you know, in your, in your camp. Yep. So that people know if they're scrolling, oh, you know, I, I can do something like this too, or I'm going to learn how to do designs in this kind of fashion. Yep. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and take our community tab, which is here. And let's move that down because that'll go somewhere else. And then this section that's right here your footer will come up this way. We'll address the inconsistencies that are happening there in a minute. Okay, that flow is already feeling better. And I kind of like this kind of back and forth here. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's a question for you, Howard. If we mm -hmm. want to do almost like a uh, like a parallax pop out kind of zone, if that makes sense, to where it's almost like this green section is kind of behind. We have an image here that kind of parallaxes, so it looks like you're kind of looking through the site in this section. Is that something we can do? Sort of. Um, if you if you get creative with opacity and fixed scrolling and possibly scroll groups you can kind of do things like that but it it depends I'd, ha I'd have to think about it more okay uh let's leave it here for then then um oh you know what this is where we can play with that idea that i had that i think will actually work out well um and that is that we can pull what did i just do oh i scaled this rectangle <laughs> Hmm? Oh, that's oh. What? <laughs> what did we do? How did this even what happen? We done. Um, I think that I scaled it proportionally when I was doing like the vertical scaling, and then the edges just went full out as well. All right, we're gonna go ahead and delete that, uh, and we're just gonna plug in a new one right there. I did. I made some choices. That's what happened. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, and I think with that selected, I can grab my color, but let's think about where I want to take this with color, because I think the answer is that I want to do, all right, we're going to try this and it might not work. I think what I want to do is, oh, no, there we go. Uh, do I hate it already? No. Maybe I see what you're going for. I want it to like intro in so that it feels like it's a new section, but still familiar. Right. I think it could work. I think it could work. I think this needs to move up to maybe here or there mm -hmm. needs to be some kind of header. All right, we'll figure out what that is, but I think that there is potential here. Let's definitely put a little shadow on 
this little guy so that he floats a little better. Funny options. And again, instead of doing drop shadow, so I just want to show the difference between the two. So drop shadow will be directional. Um, I like to do an outer glow because it makes it look like it is kind of top down uh, and just feels a little softer to me. Right. There we go. Okay, so now that is... You, you do have to keep in mind that if you are working on a project that you know... If you're working on a project in Photoshop that you know is going to be opened in Adobe XD, you have to keep in mind that some things are not available in XD, like outer glows, for example. Yes. We have shadows, we have inner glows, we have all sorts of gradients, but outer glow, I don't... I don't. That's a good question, though. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to test that out, actually. Fun. I will test it out now while we're talking. Yes. Do I have a text layer here? I do. Okay, so text. Okay, this is gonna. This is starting to look kind of interesting, and I think maybe if I flip it so that the section over here. I also love. This happens every time on these streams. Uh, we like have something that we think we're going toward, and then as we get live and it starts going and chat, you start giving suggestions and stuff. It just goes out the window. No, uh, all the time. And that's that's almost where we're going. Okay, so we're gonna have a get started. Maybe some copy goes there. And then we can have, you know, some of the stuff here. So this can maybe come up. Oops, no, no, no. Calm down. Okay. <laughs> like yelling at Photoshop. <laughs> no, like you're talking to your Photoshop. dog or something. Yes. Off the couch. Off. All right, so. Okay, yeah, so if you add an outer, if you add an outer glow, uh, it just won't, it won't exist when cool. you open in Photoshop. Cool. Totally fine with me. We're going to do a rule here. Um, and this is, this is more probably just a visual reference to me to say like, we need some kind of break here. It may be that the rule is like the thing that works and it may be that something else needs to go there. So we'll see once we get there, but I do want to have this kind of thing. There's some se separation, but then that comes in. And this is going to give us just a nice little area to have some copy mm -hmm. and then be able to do like a couple badges. Cause I think we have two or three badges. So I can do a couple badges there. And then maybe the copy is just supporting to say, you know, there's all kinds of ways for you to get involved. And then we go straight into there. Yeah. I think badges, people love collectibles of any sort. You know, our, one of our coffee, do you know Dutch bros? Oh Yeah. Yeah, so we a Dutch Bros uh, coffee just opened up not too far from us, and we're addicted. Not that their coffee's good, but um, but they also have like monthly stickers, uh, physical and on the app as well, and those sorts of things people love. They're they're yep. just like little pieces of paper or little cartoons in your app, but collecting them is just fun. Yep, and I have another one of these, but I don't know where it is. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this one. All right, I'm gonna copy this and pretend that there are two there. That's fun. And then this mm -hmm. copy is, you know, find, get involved, uh, find your place, and maybe the sound effects that happen during design. Oh, boops and vooms and yeah. I need someone to make a mod for Photoshop that every tool has a sound effect. It has to happen. And you have That's... to do it with your voice. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yep. If there are any sound designers out there, hit me up. <laughs> okay. It's feeling it's feeling very unbalanced here, but that's fine because I really like what's happening here. So we'll we'll roll with that. And then that allows us to kind of take this Discord section and make it into one large section, which is fun. Uh, what if um sorry to interrupt, yes, I'm just go. kind of brainstorming as you're doing this. The the ruler or the separator above get started. What if you put that beside get started and it kind of goes to the right? So it breaks it up that way. That way it's oh. more balanced. I don't know if that's going to work or not. And it maybe you can have it the same color and maybe a bit thicker. Yes. Uh, yes. That is actually one of my favorite things. I feel like I've stolen from UX design is like the rule, the, the side rule, I guess. Uh, cause I do a lot of publication design and I've, mm. I saw someone do like this thing. Is that what you're talking about? 
No, actually, like on the right hand side of Get Started, and it goes horizontally across. Oh, this way? Yeah, maybe not that thick, just like kind of like a, I don't know, 10 pixels or so, something like that. And then just so that there's something on the right hand side, this yep. may not work. I'm just kind of, it probably doesn't work. No, it probably won't work. It doesn't not work. Um... It'd probably have to go all the way to the end to kind of flush with the video. I'm just trying to think of ways to balance that section because there was that little gap up there. Yep. What if we, okay, what if, yes, in the weeds. All right, so what if we take these, we're gonna group these and just do copy. And oh boy, am I gonna need to just work on these layers before I send them over. Uh, <laughs> what if this goes over here, okay? This comes up here, because in theory, there will be content all the way across here. Mm -hmm. And then this turns, ooh, oh, come on, Andrew. What are your fingers doing? All right, so that's there. Copy goes up here. Mm -hmm. And then these two would move over this way. Maybe shrink down or maybe just stay there. Oh. Whoa. Where are we? Okay. So these go here. Not mad about that. And then that way, in theory, I'm actually going to delete this arrow and just put a full thing there so that we can mentally see if it's balanced with right. just a full rectangle here. Mm -hmm. All right. I also, we had, so the first season of Office Hours, we thought it was just going to be like, we're doing a short show and then it's over. And so we didn't have any theme. It was kind of just like Office Hours. Uh, and so I like to call it Office Hours Vanilla because it reminds me of uh, World of Warcraft back in the day when it was just mm -hmm. like, I don't know, it kind of existed. Okay, so this this is not bad because this will go off the edge that will have it kind of bleed on the scroll so that it has a little right. bit of that like horizontal scroll. Mm -hmm. And then this probably needs a little more vertical space, but I think that yep. the overlaps actually feel right now. I think so. And yeah. Norris just mentioned the play button. It's kind of floating around. Um, yeah, I think I think this it does definitely feels more balanced. And I agree that the the spacing and the padding probably needs to be bumped up a little bit. It feels a little bit too squishy. Yep. But you know, those are things that we can easily fix in XD, especially once we start using stacks and padding. We can just rearrange the whole sections uh, very yep. quickly. Ooh, it's starting to feel it's starting to feel so much better. We have about thirty minutes left. Oh. We're definitely on the like zone of like, are we going to do this? And then we're hitting the momentum of like, ooh, it's going to be good maybe. Mm -hmm, uh, maybe. And then hopefully we eventually in like 15 minutes, we get to the point where we're like, it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I like that we're kind of breaking the grid now and this is not going to look right, but in theory, something like this to where now it becomes this very organic kind of flowing instead of as boxy. Um, but we should be able to still cut some of the stuff uh, at boxes. So even if this comes down here and then we can think through, there's probably a box here and then it cuts right there. So that, like that's a section, but make it look like it's kind of ebbing and flowing. Right. Um, okay. So that there, this discord, I'm not crazy about, and I almost want to put the discord in a computer so it's not just like a floating screen so we have like a physical thing that's mm. attached to it yeah i think that could work okay let's give it a shot uh give me just a second we're going up here into adobe stock uh i probably have one lying around somewhere too oh I, you, you I would be the there. person that has one Possibly. That sounded so, you would be the person that has I a screen. Be. Where would I even find it? I have so many folders and there, nothing's organized. And like half the stuff is uh, not synced to my computer. It's all in the cloud. Are you looking oh. for one with a transparent screen or just like? It's Photoshop. We can do whatever we want. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I have a few computers that we can yes. use. Let's see if I can add them to the library. Oh, ooh, oh. the magic of Adobe.
All right. So let's see. Sync from OneDrive first. Yes. I'll let so, you know when they uh, pop okay. up. Uh, we'll leave that open. So chat, if you see it, it will happen right here. It will just pop up, um, which will be super fun to see. All right. So I love that. And you know what? Let's, ooh, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do the double hover kind of thing. What did I just transform? Gosh, I can't talk and work at the same time. You think after all these years. Um, you would think. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make it so that we have almost like a double overlay. So now we have, let's see, that hits right there. And again, we'll probably need to work on the spacing, but I love doing a little double overlay here. Uh, let's turn off our rollers. There we go. I don't want those. Okay, they were synced. Uh, let me, I'm gonna put them in the library now. Sweet. And there they go. Let's see if they pop up. I don't know what's going to happen. Leave a button there. And look at that. Just like that, they synced as we went oh. uh, right there on the screen. There they are. Magic. Totally thought the video was frozen. We were looking at the wrong square. Yeah. Oh, and hello from SoCal. What's up? That's where I am. All right, so looking at these, I think that I want, well, let's try this one. I'm just gonna pull it over here so like, see. That'd be cool if there was one that, that's an old computer, but that'd be cool if there was one that's like in a cabin or or something. That, that you can probably do in, in Substance Stager. You can actually you know create a little cabin and then put a little computer there. You can put the, scr the uh, screenshot in the screen. Oh yeah. It might take a while, but you could do it. All right, let's see, uh, let's see if we use the uh, object selection tool, if it's going to be able to mask this computer. Let's see what happens. It's on a pretty light colored, similar background. Okay, so I missed mm. a couple little edges here and there. Yeah, it's not, not terrible. About it. um, let's get the screen on here and then we can worry about the rest. Uh, you know what? Let's just do this because I think it actually is going to be pretty good. Oh, Andrew, what have you been selecting at like zero pixels? Okay. All right, so I'm just using uh, the area select here and we're gonna get, it's just gonna be super rough for now. And then we'll go in and clean it up in a little bit. Sure. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna see if I can find a picture of a computer in a cabin Ooh, or love a it. tent or something. All right, so this is going to be for holding purposes. The mask on this is not great, but that's fine. What did I miss? I left 20 minutes ago. Um, you missed me doing a lot of things very wrong, uh, mm -hmm. and we have landed on pretty right. So not you're doing great. Here Came you back go. Just in time for us to pull it together. So we can mask in to that zone. Welcome to my tutorial on bad masking. Also, it doesn't help that the, the laptop in that stock image is a strange aspect ratio. Yes. It's, it doesn't yes. look normal. It it's looks not like 16 by, by 9. Yeah. No. You had to choose the, the worst one, Andrew. I, you know, that's what I do. Uh, okay, so we get started. I'm going to change the color of this because it's really messing with my brain uh, to just a placeholder kind of so we know that it's not going to be anything. Mm -hmm. That will actually be more copies of this. I found the season. Get started. That looks good over there. The flow's feeling okay. Um, these buttons are feeling too big. So let's shrink these buttons down and that might help us a little bit badges yeah yeah and i think you mentioned that there there are three badges in total there are yeah so i think if if you did want three of them you'd probably have to shrink them down anyway yes all right there are our two badges let's just line them up with the bottom there i'm just gonna kind of eyeball 
in theory what I think a third one could fit. All right. There we go. Oh, don't do that. Here we go. Also, chat, how are we feeling about this? I'm always here for feedback or thoughts. How how how's our vibes? Vibes are good. Good. It's looking nice. Just... When do you when you're working on a project like this, when do you get user feedback involved? Like do you do you do user testing or do you you know, post on social media. I know you stream, which is a very, it's an edge case. Most people don't stream while they're designing, but typically if you're not streaming, how do you deal with feedback? Yeah, I, um, I'm very specific on the feedback that I ask for. And so if I'm sending something to a client, I'll say, Hey, what do you think about X, Y, or Z? Um, and it's not just kind of like, Hey, let me know what you think it's always very specific. And I always try to lead them into saying what I want them to say. Mm -hmm. um, I always, you know, have, Hey, here is my recommendation for this. I'm not super crazy about this idea, but if you have a better idea or you love it, then we can keep it. Uh, and so I try to just coach them into like, Hey, here are the things that you should say about this. Uh, especially as an, as the expert, you're supposed to kind of be like, Hey, here's what it's supposed to be. Um, and then leave open the parts where it's like, this is open for interpretation or your preferences. Uh, and so I try to communicate purpose over preference. So when I ask for feedback, it's usually, is this changing the purpose of this project or do you just prefer to it to be something else? I like the idea of guiding your stakeholders into specific areas because oftentimes they're not designers. And, you know, we've all heard the, can you make it pop or can you make the logo bigger or whatever it might be. And if you were to go into that meeting and explain, you know, headers up at the top, the logo is this size because of X, Y, and Z, then I think that could avoid that conversation of make the logo this big, which yep. is just not necessary ever. Yes, absolutely. And it gives you the ammunition to, you know, if they say, hey, we want this logo to be way bigger, um, to go back and say, hey, when we talked, we said that the purpose of this project was to really highlight the community aspects of this. And so making the logo bigger doesn't necessarily highlight the community, it highlights the business. So is that a decision we want to make? And it allows you to have that ammo that if they're trying to make a bad decision to be like, hey, we've agreed on this purpose. And I don't think that this is serving that purpose. So maybe let's try something else. Right. All right. The idea at the end is of the day, oh, sorry, sorry. No, you go ahead. I'm talking to myself <laughs> at the end of the day. You know, they hired a designer to design who is, so, you? <laughs> you know, you have to nicely find a way to tell them that these things were designed with a purpose and there's a reason the logo is smaller. There's a reason the text is thick and there's a reason that the background, and of course they can have suggestions on a few things, but we have to be, we have to be open as designers to push back against their pushback because oftentimes yep. their pushback, they have no reason for what they've just heard through friends of friends of friends of grandchildren that logos have to be big or you have to make things look a certain way. They, they don't know. We have to, we have to, we have to understand that. Yep. Also, I, sorry, you, you probably just saw me. I never have my door open when I'm streaming and my doors open and it just like scared the bejesus out of me. Cause I was like, what? what? <laughs> Whew. Whew. All right. Uh, we're back in it. And now I know that this is looking bad, but it does give us an opportunity to do this, to move this whole section up um, and it will fit way better and actually save us some page space. If I move this over here and then just bring like a nice little kind of thing there, the spacing is weird, but let's pretend that this is working for now. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. This computer looks is just really nasty, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll definitely have to find a better one. Yeah, it's there's some kind of weird, there's something weird happening there, but the idea of that is interesting at least. Uh and then I love it kind of transitioning into the community members here. And then maybe we do like a little footer at the bottom still. Mm-hmm. Now the, the Discord section with the computer. Yes. Another option would be to showcase a mobile device like a phone. But at what point do you start thinking which device makes more sense to deliver to the users that 
are landing on this page. Yeah, I think it's weird because in my brain, I use my Discord's always on my screen because we're using it during the show and it's on a monitor or something. And yeah. I never use Discord on my phone. Uh, and so I don't know how people use Discord. Chat, how do you use Discord? Do you use it on a phone or are you on uh on somewhere else. And yes, Elizabeth says it is Discord. And yes, and Elizabeth, I believe if we zoom in here, uh, <laughs> there's there's Elizabeth who's in chat in, in our Discord. It's Inception. I think I saw uh, Gareth in there too, right? He was in the chat. Yep, Gareth is in here too, yes. Man, Office Hours, okay, Office Hours friends. If you are here or have watched Office Hours and are also watching right now, uh, can you put some little tiny hands in chat? I'm just curious on what the... Uh, what the overview is. And yes, Elizabeth, it is for office hours. You're creating a site for office hours. Just mind blowing. Mind blowing. All right, title card rescue. I think at some point I saw Mohammed, I think it was suggested under the the badges to put a, what do you say? A white circle, white circle shadow. Um, I don't oh, know if I would agree with, I don't know if I would agree with that. White shadows are, are kind of, weird they're, they're difficult to work with um and i think in in this uh, section that you're working on that at least where the badges are it looks like there's enough contrast between the white background and the blue that you probably don't need a shadow mm -hmm. oftentimes as designers you know we want to throw shadows on everything but if you're designing if you're designing with that in mind you know making sure that there's contrast then you should be designing to not need a shadow does that make sense? Yep. And then the shadow could just be like a cherry on top, just to add a little bit of depth. Uh, so I am seeing that I'm going to run into an issue here. Once this scroll happens, it just gets super heavy. And so I think I just need a rule to break across here just to mm. separate those two. Because uh, having the box there looked okay, but then once I actually put the season scrollers, like it's going to be chaotic right here. Yeah. Uh, and so I think just a little bit of vertical space will be helpful. And in yeah, theory... Yeah, definitely I would... I would so two things that I would do if I was working on this. Yes. First thing I would I would definitely add some vertical padding above on everything. or below. Yeah, every just move all that stuff down, give like a nice chunk. Cause then you might not even need that vertical rule. But also the the description, I know it's all placeholder right now, but it feels very long to me. So it's adding this unnecessary right. weight. Yep. So if it's like two or three lines at most, then it'll just kind of lighten up a little bit. You're totally right. Boop. Boop. And then we just copy and paste. Oh man, that was that was like pure unadulterated sound effect right there from the deep of my core. I wish I had my uh my boop or wish I wish Paco had the little boop animation I used. Oh, man, I feel like you and Kyle Webster just have the unnecessary but essential production value. Oh, it's, it's like, very necessary. We don't need that, but we need it. Yeah. I've been creating um, shortcut overlays. So if I do a repeat grid or add things to a group, you may have seen one of them on, on Twitter that I've posted, but there's little animated over, like lower thirds and they're all done in like an XD fashion. So the, you know, it'll look like the bounds of a, an object and then they're kind of like stretch. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but I've been making these unnecessary things like that. It's just kind of a fun thing to add to the streams. Yeah. Why not? Hmm, yeah. There's no rules here. Right, Paco? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, this was just bugging me. We'll figure it out. Okay. Everyone's going to hate this. Just imagine that this, is, that this is right. Imagine that this is not stretching and squashing this. There I just want nothing right about that. I know. I just want something that is going to be like that kind of a space taker zone. So I'll figure that out and in post, it might be something else. It might be a phone. It might be like a horizontal phone would actually fit there really well with Discord across it. Um, that might be the solution. All right, everything needs more vertical padding, but then this can come back center. And then we just have a little footer. All right, so the spacing is atrocious. That's well, fine. that's we okay, because once we actually get it into Adobe XD and we add things to a stack, and it's like super simple because I, I, I was watching you struggling, moving things around. You had to select yes. all these different groups. You had to like kind of inch them down and stuff. And you had to, if you want to rearrange, like swap the positions, it's just a whole other story. But XD, you're going to see it tomorrow. You can just whoop, drag and drop and everything swaps for you. It's wonderful. Magic. so nice. See, that's the magic mm -hmm. of I don't have to spend all the extra time 
uh, I can get the ideas in, and then the magic mm-hmm. of Howard uh, brings everything to life. Oh, I'm so sorry on what is happening with these files. I'm trying to find the title card for the other one for the second season. What have we done here? What have you done? Oh my goodness. What have I done? <laughs> is that going to change it out? Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, something weird happened. Uh, where is the other version of this? So in theory, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish building out. I know we have about 10 minutes left, so I'm kind of trying to figure out where to go for last steps is we're going to build out uh, a few more of these for each season. Then we'll be able to scroll here to get the seasons that we want Mm -hmm. and then how to get started right away, which is definitely the flow that we want and then join into discord. And then here, I think we might need some more copy here. Uh, to highlight that it is like members of our community. Um, And maybe that's like a little, a fun little call out. So maybe we do like a big image with like a fun little call it or something. Do Um, your members have a, like a name? I don't know what they're called, like camp. I don't know what they're called at camp, but like the people who run the thing are like counselors. What are the actual, like, I don't, I've never, I went, never went to camp camp. So I, don't, I know I don't. we like, we've been calling them campers this season. So maybe oh, it's, campers, uh, yeah. well, we've been, well, that's easy. We've been calling. So we've had a highlight each week that is our star campers. So we'll just do our star campers for each week and put them there. Yeah. Um, and then maybe we have a call to action here that is like a submit your, uh, portfolio. So maybe, hmm. maybe there are four of these right that are the highlights and then a couple of these uh and then there is like another column that has some copy or content in it to kind of be a little pop out for them to submit so right everyone there's in the like, chat's yelling campers 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 okay camp- wow everyone's excited about campers I-, I do call them campers yes hi campers you guys will be able to see me say it uh thursday morning we do our little intros Hey campers. And I think thinking about the user experience side of things for a second, I don't, I, I forget what all the other content is up there, but you know, it says star campers here. There's a possibility that someone's going to get to this section, read star campers and think, what the heck is a camp? Um, so maybe in the section right above where it says get started, that copy there could be, you know, become, become an office hour camper or something, just so you're kind of setting up Yep. that um you know the, the, all the other camper references further down so people don't aren't really knowing or people will know what they're getting into yep um, words are hard okay. and i do need some coffee steve i need lots of coffee. <laughs> look, at, look at the amount never, of typos i, I just made it like a sentence uh all right yes so that will be overview that is giving us the verbiage of Here's what the season is that we're doing right now. We're at Camp Know How. You guys are campers, earn merit badges, have outdoor adventure, and then we join the Discord, and then we have Star Campers. I think that that fits really well. Mohammed's saying, I just realized that this stream is it's a four hour stream. I'm like, I hope not. <laughs> I, man, I could use four hours, but I, I love hanging yeah. out with you, Andrew, but. I mean, I guess maybe he's talking about today and tomorrow. It's four it hours is. combined. Yes, yes, okay. combined yeah. across the way. I need a way. break after this. I need some coffee. I need a break. I actually have another meeting after this, but yeah. But I like you, Andrew, but four hours straight, I, I can't do it. I have another web design meeting immediately after this, so I'm just oh, getting no. in the zone, so it's perfect. Um, okay, cool. So I think that what I want to do, um, and I'll brush this up so we can look at it tomorrow, is basically try to make this so that there is some sort of side here content that is uh content and like header and then here's how you can become a star camper what it is maybe a submit button and then there's four tiles over here that highlight kind of the campers Mm -hmm. and that way it becomes a little more dynamic uh, and it's not necessarily just like title thing because i feel like these titles are competing uh, and so if this was somewhere over mm. here and then everything moved up a little bit, I think that that could fit a little bit better. You know what you can do, and maybe I'll, I'll tackle this tomorrow, is if you want to really obnoxiously make this feel real, you can make this section look kind of like a the wall of a cabin. And then <sighs> yeah. it could be like a, an old, ru- dirty, I was going to say rusty, but like an old, dirty piece of paper where you're kind of highlighting. And maybe the, the maybe the, like the people they're posted are like Polaroids 
Yeah, even if it's like corkboard, like it's like a corkboard background, cork and then everything yes, is like thumbtacked in. That's really yeah. fun. Let's do that. That's really fun. Okay. Let's do that. And so okay, we'll do yeah, that when, tomorrow. Whenever that happens, uh, I always like if I'm in a meeting, uh, I always will do this. And I think Peter Del Tondo does this too. Is I toss it into Comic Sans and then I put it into super hot pink, mm. uh, and then like make it. it huge and then that it way i just know to me exactly and like never matter where it is i just know oh there is a note here that i need to change um and so that's the majority of my work you'll see just big rectangles that are pink because i know that i need to go back and do that i think it's a good idea so we just have a few seconds left andrew do you want to uh wrap things up and tell people where they can find you and what to expect tomorrow Totally. So uh, if you want to follow me, you can do so anywhere on the internet at hawk.co, H-O-C-H-D-O-T-C-O. Uh, couldn't get the punctuation, so D-O-T dot. Uh, and you also can join us every Friday for Adobe Office Hours, 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here on Adobe Live. Uh, this week, we are doing giveaways. We're having a design off. We're going to have a ton of fun. Um, so you can join us for that. But we'll also be back tomorrow with Howard. Uh, he's going to be taking over and making the chaos that we've created today into a beautiful reality, um, which I'm very excited to see uh, the functionality of the idea, like actually taking feet. That's always my favorite part. So come back tomorrow at the same time, same place. Uh, what's up after us, Howard? That's a good question. Let me check the schedule. And looks like we have a daily creative challenge Ooh, fun. Uh, hosted by Elise, which are great. So if anyone's just getting into XD, definitely stay tuned for that. Good stuff. I don't know if this is the replay or this is a brand new set of challenges. Replay. Replay, it is a replay. All right, so it's a replay, but if you haven't didn't ca catch it, check that out. And I'll be back yes. tomorrow doing whatever we do, probably making some stuff look obnoxious with inner shadows, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna have some yes. fun. Make it so wrong until it's right. Yes, but thank you to everyone who has tuned in today. We'll be back tomorrow. Stick around for Elise and we'll see you all later. Bye.